Jorita and this is my channel Explore with Jorita. Vaccines are the most effective way to prevent infectious diseases. They prevent up to 3 million deaths every year worldwide. However, if people stop having vaccines, it is possible for infectious diseases to quickly spread again. So we can say that one of the most important inventions in human history is vaccine. Today I am going to share about how the first vaccine was invented. Before 1796, the only known way to prevent smallpox infection was to deliberately infect a person with scabs from a person with smallpox. This deliberate infection was called variolation and it was done under the supervision of a physician or someone who knew how to give just enough infectious materials to evoke an immune response without a full-blown infection. The latter was not always the case, but the severity and risk of death from variolation were lower than the risk of acquiring smallpox, the natural way. In May 1796, a British physician named Edward Jenner tested his hypothesis that direct Vaccination of a person with a much milder and less deadly cowpox would make that person immune to smallpox. Jenner based this theory on his observations of milkmaids. Those milkmaids who had acquired cowpox through their contact with cows were immune to smallpox even when exposed multiple times to the deadly diseases. Cowpox is an uncommon illness in cattle, usually mild, that can be spread from a cow to a human via sores on the cow's udder. Smallpox, in contrast, was a deadly disease of humans. It killed about 30% of those it infected. Survivors often bore deep pitted scars on their faces and other parts of the body affected by the blistering illness. Smallpox was a leading cause of blindness. Jenner is said to have been interested in the observation of a dairy maid. The dairy maid told him I shall never have smallpox, for I have had cowpox. I shall never have an ugly pokemarked face. And many other dairy workers commonly believed that infection with cowpox protected them from smallpox. The protective effect of cowpox infection from smallpox was common local knowledge. Then why was Jenner's involvement important? Jenner decided to systematically test the observation, which would then form the basis for a particular application of the benefit of cowpox infection. Jenner scratched some material from a cowpox sore on the hand of a milkmaid into the arm of eight-year-old James Phipps, the son of Jenner's gardener. Young Phipps felt poorly for several days, but made a full recovery. A short time later, Jenner scratched some matter from a fresh human smallpox sore into Phipps' arms to make him ill with smallpox. Phipps, however, did not contract smallpox. Jenner tested his idea 
on other humans and published a report of his findings. Jenner repeated his experiments several times and got the same result. Other scientists did likewise and got the same result. Jenner is famous for having applied the scientific method to establish the means of preventing smallpox. There is also ample evidence that Jenner had studied the findings of other research of his time who reported a similar protective effect from having cowpox. However, it was Edward Jenner's detailed description of his experiments that convinced his colleagues and authorities that inoculation with cowpox, which he called vaccination, was preferable in terms of safety to variolation. Edward Jenner was born in 1749 in England. At the early age of 14, Jenner apprenticed for seven years with surgeon Daniel Ludlow. Then, at the age of 21, Jenner attended St. George's Hospital in London, where he continued his medical studies. In 1788, he was elected fellow of the Royal Society. His keen observations of nested cuckoo and his publications of those findings earned him that distinction. It was the same ability to observe and describe events around him that led to the publication of his findings of a series of case studies on people exposed to cowpox and rendered immune to smallpox. Together with his experiment on James Phipps, his observations earned him the recognition of being the first person to develop a successful vaccine against smallpox. By 1803, Jenner's findings were translated to French and Spanish, and the King of Spain launched a vaccination campaign to the Americas and the Far East. Throughout his life, Edward Jenner received many accolades for his contribution to the understanding of infectious diseases. Jenner's method of vaccination against smallpox grew in popularity and eventually spread around the globe. About 150 years after Jenner's death in 1823, smallpox would be making its last gasps. The World Health Organization, who eventually declared smallpox to be eradicated from the planet, in 1980, after a massive surveillance and vaccination program. So friends, I hope I could answer many of your curious questions through this video. If you have enjoyed this video, subscribe my channel to get more fascinating videos like this. Thank you. Bye-bye.